Welcome back to Murder with Friends. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Wonderland murders, but there's so much to unpack here. So Earl, let's start from John Holmes' drug addiction. We just talked about Johnny Wad becoming this persona, addicted to drugs, addicted to the porn high life, and this leads him to get in contact with some of the shadiest drug dealers I've ever researched, the Wonderland gang. Do you wanna talk about this a little bit? Absolutely, I mean, uh, you also have to understand in the 70s, uh, the nightclub scene in LA uh, was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, unlike today where there's really, I don't think there's any nightclubs. Uh, one Oak. Yeah. Well, it's one not Oak. the same sort of thing. Well, but One Oak used to be the legendary Gazaris, uh, which is uh, 80s metal uh, heaven. But uh, speaking of nightclubs, there was a nightclub on Crescent Heights and Santa Monica Boulevard called the Starwood, mm -hmm. which is uh, where bands like uh, Motley Crue got their start, Van Halen, mm -hmm. Quiet Riot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was owned by uh, Eddie Nash who uh, was uh, probably the number one cocaine dealer uh, on the West Coast, and he was also probably the number one club owner. He owned uh, any club that would make him money. Uh, and uh, John Holmes, I think, would go to the Starwood, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how they developed a friendship, because uh, John needed Eddie's cocaine, and uh, Eddie liked having the celebrity of John Holmes in his clubs. Because, I mean, because John was blowing through money. We talked before that he was making $3,000 a day during his peak, but the drug use led him to uh, lose a lot of work. He, you know, wasn't reliable on set, and so he wasn't making as much money, but the, all the money that he was making, he was just spending it on drugs. So it seems to me like his friendship with Eddie Nash, they were both getting something from each other. Eddie oh, absolutely. Eddie Nash got the star, the star power, and then John Holmes got his drug fix. Yeah, because he, Eddie Nash knew if... Uh... John Holmes was at the Starwood. Girls would come to, you know, sleep with him or would meet him. Right. Uh, and then guys would come because they know the girls would be there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they were really a, in a macabre sense of the perfect pairing for each other. Uh, and, I mean, Eddie Nash was a, uh, you know, vicious guy. I mean, he's, yeah. uh, there's, uh, just to give you an insight into uh, his psyche, uh, just for kicks, Eddie Nash would have uh, women up to his house who he knew enjoyed the booger sugar, the cocaine, and he wouldn't sell it to them. What he would do is he would go uh, make a number two in his bathroom, and he wouldn't wipe. And he would come out. No. He would tell these girls, you can have all the cocaine you want, but you have to lick me clean. No. It was just a crazy, no. like, th this is what he would do for fun. Like, no. hey, uh, who wants to lick my ass for free drugs? This is a crazy time, Earl, because, so, okay, so that's Eddie Nash. So that just shows you the craziness of Eddie Nash. This is what he would do for kicks. Right, but then let's talk about the Wonderland gang, the, the drug dealing gang. So there were these two groups that John Holmes found himself involved with. And I heard stories that the Wonderland gang kind of, uh, he would get it, because John Holmes was trying to get his drugs from wherever he could get them. Right. And um, I heard stories that he would hang out with the Wonderland gang and they thought he was kind of a joke and they would make him just whip out his dick at parties just, you know, because they knew that he would do whatever they wanted as long as uh, they would give him drugs. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think we all know drug addicts. Uh, when they want the fix, they'll do anything. I mean, uh, I mean, I've showed my dick at the comedy store just to get a laugh. Uh, so Did I, it work? Oh, yeah, no, it kills all the time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good closer. Oh, it's the ultimate closer, <laughs> but uh, that's another uh, TV show. Uh, so, yeah, John Holmes was desperate for money, and uh, he went back and forth between Nash and the Wonderland gang, uh, and then I think at some point, Eddie Nash had a uh, floor safe mm -hmm. in his bedroom with uh, probably a few million dollars, tons of cocaine, tons of quaaludes, ecstasy, uh, and John Holmes informed the Wonderland gang of uh, this. This, yeah. And that put in motion uh, the robbery. Mm -hmm. uh, John Holmes told them, hey, I'm going to leave the kitchen door open. You just go in there. There's a, He has a huge black bodyguard, uh, Eddie Nash, called, mm -hmm. named Gregory Diles. Who, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Boogie Nights, that mm -hmm. scene where they rob... They didn't yeah. call him Eddie Nash, but mm -hmm. uh, it was basically the telling of this story. Mm -hmm. um, and so John Holmes went over to Eddie Nash's, left the kitchen door open, uh, 
the Wonderland gang goes over there. Uh, at gunpoint, they, I think, pistol whip uh, Gregory Diles. Yeah. Uh, embarrass uh, Eddie Nash substantially. Uh, and uh, But, very important, they don't kill anyone. No, which they probably should have. I mean, yeah. hindsight, uh, they were stupid to let a guy a like... major Ed drug dealer in Los Angeles. And just a bad dude. I mean, I... I don't want to sound like I'm a fan of Eddie Nash, you know, I, I, I'm not, but I'm just fascinated by his place in the uh, music world. Uh, well, and also just sort of like the L.A. underworld. He's a name that we only think about now when we talk about the CD time that was the 70s and the 80s. You know, no one talks about him and gives him all these accolades. You don't hear his name unless you're talking about this dark time. Yeah, I think people are still scared of him, even though he's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just... He was just such a bad, bad person. And yeah, so they so they rob Eddie Nash. They let him live, and then Eddie Nash uh, kind of gets his revenge. I it's an understatement to say that, but I think he suspected Holmes was uh, responsible in some way, uh, and I think the story was Gregory Dials, like two days after the robbery, uh, saw John Holmes with either a ring or. a bracelet of Eddie Nash is mm -hmm. on and then uh, he uh, took Nash or took uh, Holmes, Holmes up to Nash and uh, let's just say uh, Nash forced him to give up the uh, identity of the robbers and he made John Holmes go with Gregory Tiles and some associates mm -hmm. uh, to go up to the Wonderland house they knew if Holmes buzzed that they would let him they, in. They would let him in. It's John Holmes, they're going to let right. him in. Right. Oh, he needs drugs. And we actually have a video from that same documentary I showed you earlier, just kind of summing up what happened when Holmes was buzzed into the property. Let's take a look. The three killers carrying metal pipes beat Richardson to death, then attacked Joy Miller and Billy Deverell, who were asleep in their bedroom. Finally, they set on Ron Lanius and his wife Susan down from Sacramento to visit her estranged husband. As the killers moved through the house, they left in their wake a river of blood. Neighbors later reported hearing screams, but they chalked up the noise to normal drug dealing activities. It's very telling of the nature of Los Angeles and its people, at least its upscale people at the time, that when the screams were heard from the Wonderland house, that some of the neighbors reported later thinking that it was just primal scream therapy and not anything to do with crime. The beatings lasted well over an hour. The killers left only when they felt certain that everyone was dead. At about 5 a.m., the killers returned to Nash's house with Holmes. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that uh, crime scene is. Uh, yeah, we're actually we're going to show some pictures from the crime scene because it literally is like they painted. They went in with a spray paint of blood. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's absolutely brutal. Um, the, what they did to the Wonderland gang. But I think what sticks out to me, and maybe it's because I'm just so desensitized to murder at this point, obviously, look, I have a whole fucking show about it, um, that the neighbors heard the screams, very much heard the screams, acknowledged they heard the screams, and they were like, eh, it's probably some hippie shit. Probably just some stuff that goes down. It's probably just some, you know, uh, scream meditation or whatever. That doesn't sit well with me at all. Well, this is a different era. You know, it's the 70s, you know, up in the hills of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's nonstop music, the sex, you know, every kind of noise you, a human could make is being made on a nightly basis. Yeah. So I could understand why a neighbor would be like, oh, it's just that group of wackos having a good time. Yeah, uh, it's just, it's crazy. So they, they basically commit this murder very audibly and they get away with it. Before they left the murder scene, uh, Dials made John Holmes uh, put his uh, hand in blood and then put it, uh, I think, above the bed. Yes. So the cops would know that John Holmes was there. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of, you know, once again, not to sound like a fan of Eddie Nash, but he was kind of smart to kind of Pin it on him. To implicate John um, Holmes. And then, uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately, one of the victims, uh, you know, survived. Yes, yes. Barely. So they, they targeted um, six, five were there, and only four died. 
Well, I mean, this is a tough spot that John Holmes was in, and I wonder a lot if it were me, would I have gone? Because would I have gone through with this murder? Would is this? You know, we talked a lot about making a murderer. I think that I probably would have just rather have been killed, honestly, than to go on this murderous rampage with this guy that I'm terrified with. That to me sounds like the ultimate torture. I mean, with a guy like Eddie Nash, I would. Uh, I mean, I've never done a drug in my life, so I can't. Uh necessarily put my brain behind John Holmes' thoughts, yeah. but uh, Eddie Nash strikes me as a guy you don't really want to be in bed with in terms of business dealings or, you know, have any interactions with on a normal basis. So I, I would have, uh, well, I guess Holmes did kind of go to Florida for a couple months, uh, take a sabbatical. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, we're going to be talking a little bit about what Holmes did following the murders after we take a quick break, but that was the Wonderland Murders. We'll see you in just a minute.